Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. If you're new to my channel, my name's Matthew and I garden in Southwest Ohio, Zone 6, and this is my seed growing room. We are lucky enough to have a full basement, so I've carved out probably a third of it to start seeds in the spring. Uh, it does house some of my house plants the rest of the year, but a lot of the house plants get transitioned outside during spring or brought up. And so there's just a few things down here that I've potted up for winter or that reside down here all year. So I'm going to walk you around and show you how everything's laid out. Um, you'll see that this video is probably sponsored by Sam's Club. Not really, but a lot of the things in my seed growing room came from Sam's Club. I've mentioned I really love the big discount stores like Sam's Club and Costco for gardening items. And they've come in really handy over the past three or four years since I've been gardening. So the tables came from Sam's Club. Of course, they're just folding tables you can purchase from there. My actual seed starting setup right here behind this fan came from Sam's Club. I do recommend the one from Sam's Club over Costco because it does have a little plastic sheet that lays on the trays, which prevents things from falling through them. Uh, and it also comes with wheels, so I can wheel it around, clean out behind it or whatever I need to do. And then all of the shop lights on the actual tiered shelf came from Sam's Club as well. So for the past three years, I've used one shop light per shelf. The lights specifically are the Honeywell linkable shop lights. Uh, this is one that I purchased to replace one that had gone bad in my setup. This year I added an extra light per shelf just so I could add more plants to the setup, but you could get by with the 80 to $90 shelf and one light per shelf at $20 a piece. That's less than $200 to have a nice growing setup that's movable uh, in your basement. Or if you have an extra room in your house, it's really great for that as well. And especially because all of the shop lights plug into themselves, you can connect up to 10 shop lights um, for your setup. And it's the perfect amount to fit on this five to six tier shelf here. The big lights behind me, which are really, really bright in this video, are from Rural King. They are actually shop bay lights and they are 22,000 lumens. So you see how high I have them. I don't need to lower plants. And actually there's a plant on the floor here, which I don't know if you can see it in the video. It's right here. Uh, the lights are actually too bright for it. It's sitting on the floor and it's actually got some burnt leaves. And so those are very bright. And I've been using those for several years after I found them at Rural King. Uh, the price on those lights specifically, if you're interested, have gone up. And so they were 90 to $100 a piece when I purchased them a few years ago. And I think they're closer to 120 now, but they're really thin. Uh, they consume very little power. I think it's less than 260 watt light bulbs per light, and they put out a ton of light. And so I actually have a soft box here uh, to light me up because you otherwise couldn't see me because the picture's so uh, different back there based on the amount of lighting we have. And so the shop, these are really nice, and I use them if something gets too big and will not fit on my Sam's Club rack back here, I move it to under these lights. And so you can see I have a few house plants back there in the back, but I'm gonna take you around and show you what everything is and how it works and let's get started. So just one tip, if you're going to be looking uh, at getting a fan for next winter and you don't have one for seed starting right now, go ahead and pick up your fan this spring. It's almost impossible to find pedestal fans that oscillate during winter for some reason. I had a really hard time finding that one a couple years ago that I liked. You might be able to find them online easily, but locally it's really difficult. So that's one tip I have. You should get an oscillating fan just to keep your seedlings pretty uh, strong as they start growing. Right now I just have it pointed generally at my house plants and not my seedlings just to keep some airflow in here but a pedestal fan is really important. So looking at my shop lights set up here and my shelving unit for my seeds, these are the Honeywell lights I was talking about. They're 5,000 lumens a piece and also 5,000 equivalent LED watts a piece. So I used to have only one per shelf, now I've got two, so that's 10,000 lumens. And I did that essentially and put two on this shelf so uh, I could stack trays this way. Otherwise, in the past, I've had to stack them this way to get enough light coverage, um, but this will allow me to fit 
more rows of plants this way and so they'll get sufficient lighting. You can deal, do with one unit, you will just probably have to use less and you may deal with some seedling stretching uh, towards the center if you only have one light. So these do get warm, but they're not hot enough that you can't touch them. You can purchase, of course, specific grow lights, but I have found that if you're just getting seedlings started, that's not necessary. And these are $20 a piece from Sam's Club, these shop lights right here. And they have, a, I believe, a five-year warranty. So if you have any issues, keep your receipt and you can return them. Sam's Club also has a really good returns policy. So I've got a mixture of two different type of lights. They're both Honeywell, but the ones I got a few years ago, actually, let's see if I can find one. So this, the new ones are just on off. You can see you can turn them on or off. The old ones actually have three different level settings. So you can do high, medium, and low, which was really nice if you want to put small seedlings closer and increase the intensity. Uh, you'll also notice that I don't have all of the shelves at the same height. And so I'll usually get seeds started under this lowest one here and move them up because this large um, humidity dome does not fit under this lowest shelf. So I'll, I can kind of move stuff around depending on the height of the plants and the height of the seedlings as they progress throughout the season. And that's worked really well for me. Uh, I have shown or talked about this sticky tape in another video, and this is just a fungus gnat preventative. I'm doing really good this season. I don't have any fungus gnat evidence on here, uh, but this is a certainly cheaper solution and I will link it below as to instead of getting the little flags, I find it works really well. The little flags are really expensive. They fill up pretty quickly if you have a fungus gnat issue. And I'm not just not sure why they're so expensive. This whole row of fungus gnat tape or fly tape uh, costs less than $10, I think it is. And I've had this thing three or four years and I've only used a few sheets of it. So I just pull it down and leave it hanging on the shelf here. The yellow attracts the fungus gnats and they get stuck. And then when it has enough on it, I just tear it off and pull a little more down like a, like a paper towel roll, essentially. I have supplies over here on this other shelf. Uh, I really like keeping everything kind of organized. I came in here yesterday and spent most of the day cleaning up and getting ready for spring seed starting. And so you'll see some organic fertilizers. I have empty containers to pot stuff up in, uh, extra trays down here, uh, and just various different items that I need for seed starting. So I do have also this catchy thing down here. I'll put a link down below. It is essentially a vacuum. I don't have it activated right now because I've not seen any fungus gnat issues, but it sucks bugs into the top and it has a little sticky uh, trap at the bottom. And so it blows them essentially onto that sticky trap. It works pretty well. I'll put a link to that if you're interested in it and you have any issues. And then I just have my various house plants here with these bay lights. You can see how thin they are. These also don't get hot. They get warm, of course, because they're all LED, but they are incredible and they put out a ton of light. As you can see, this whole space is lit up very brightly. So these are just a few of my house plants, my mother lemon coral sedum that I bring out uh, and plant in containers in the spring is here. Uh, and a lot of these are just succulent type and an olive tree that I have. I got a few plants over here that don't look so great. Here's my ivy that I use as a mother plant now. Uh, and then this will probably end up getting cut off and rerooted because it's looking so terribly. These things, these yuccas, um, reroot really easily in just water. And so I actually had a really large one a couple years ago and I just took cuttings and rerooted them in water. Underneath these tables, I have various boxes uh, plastic boxes of supplies. So I have peat moss, perlite, vermiculite, cocoa core, and my um, clay leca balls that I've mentioned in a prior video when I was doing. Got some more fertilizer down there. Essentially, I've just tried to keep this as organized as I can uh, in the spring, just so it's easy to get supplies. Around the side, I just have some containers. I can never have enough containers down here because I'm always mixing soil. I've talked about these busboy boxes that you can get from Sam's Club for about $15. I've actually drilled holes in these right here because they're really good to fit um, containers in. So they fit, let me see if I can find a size. This one's a little too large, but you can see it would fit about three of those containers. And the smaller size, I've been able to fit six in here and I put drainage and then it's easy to carry them in and out. Um, 
during hardening off season to do that. And so a couple I have drilled holes in, the others are not, so I mix soil in them. But I also just have various buckets down here because I'm always mixing or need to put some uh, cruddy soil in one of the containers, throw outside, uh, and that's it. We have, this is of course our dog grooming station, so we have a dog dryer. So I had this sink installed three years ago, and I've mentioned on my channel that it's probably one of the best things I did for seed starting um, because I was bringing water from upstairs to downstairs, up and down the steps in the basement a lot, and it was becoming really tedious and very difficult and was just a mess. And so I had the sink installed two seasons ago. This is my third season using it, I believe. So we had it installed the winter of 2020 and it's been a lifesaver. So let me show you the setup I have here. So we have our regular hot and cold and we do have softened water. So I had them put in an extra fixture which I have connected a water hose to. So this is just cold water and it runs to my Ely uh, water hose in the basement. And so I have a regular garden connector right here. And I also have this misting attachment that I can attach to mist the tops of seeds that works really well. And so this has been really a lifesaver. I can roll up my Ely garden hose when I don't need it out of the way, but it also gives me the opportunity to pull it all the way across the basement to water my seedlings or water any of my house plants. And just overall has been a really great option for this space. My little studio space is like next door that you see in some videos. Uh, I mentioned it in my live Sunday. It's really dark over here, but I took some Ikea curtains and an old couch and stuck it right here to shoot videos on. And so that's something that's kind of behind the scenes that you've never seen before. But this is it. This is where I grow seeds um, all spring and then where some of my house plants stay throughout the year. You probably noticed there's a lot of organic fertilizer in here. So down here, uh, then I have up there and then I even have some more in my shed. So what I like to do, and if you follow my Instagram, I took you, some of you on an adventure in November uh, that's the perfect time around here to go to Home Depot. And Home Depot typically does a really crazy discount on organic fertilizers right when it's starting to get cold around here. So November, early November, early to mid-November, late October, check out your Home Depots because these fertilizers are typically $10 a bag. And I picked a lot of these up for 50 cents to a dollar. So I will go in and buy all of my fertilizer for the coming year or the coming season or the coming two seasons. This past year, I hardly bought any. I did buy a little bit, but two years ago, I bought a ton of stuff. And even my non-organic fertilizer that I use to water my annuals, I purchased on sale doing the same thing. And you can get those instead of $6 a piece, they'll be 25 cents to 50 cents a piece. So that's a really big tip. Those of you who joined me Sunday to start seeds with me, I have had a couple peppers germinate. So it's been just about one week. I don't have any germination or I didn't last night on any of the other things I planted yet, but it can take a little bit. I do have soil uh, heat mats. And so there's one plugged up here that is currently on my peppers. I moved my geraniums off of it when I got my peppers started. That'll help speed up a little bit of that germination. And then next weekend, we will be getting a bunch more seeds starting, both peppers and annuals. So like, subscribe, and follow along for that. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone. Bye.